Hey, this is Angela with this week's Living the Shift. I have this debate with someone who's very close to me on when is a stub toe just a stub toe. And actually, this has come up in several different topics, several several different conversations and different uh, venues. And so I was guided to talk about this because it's a really, it is actually is really important at this juncture. So the concept of this being when is a stub toe just a stub toe and it doesn't have any other kind of meaning. And it goes back to looking how we look at the universe, how we participate in our realities. And it's our choice. So the way I see it, if you look at it from the really biggest point of view, is that you know we are all part of the oneness. We are all part of the divine. And in being part of the divine, sort of like the cells of our body are parts of us. We are part of the divine, part of the oneness. Which means that, you know, and, and my understanding is we have created this reality. This particular existence was all about the possibility of there being a not me. A me and a not me. What it, what it looks like to um, possibly pretend that we could be separate. And that's what we've done. That's what duality has been all about. So, and I talked about that to death. So, <laughs> the key is to say, well, if that's the case. Well, if you really take it to the really biggest level, well, it really doesn't mean anything because it's all an illusion anyway, and we're all making it up. But the the other level of this is that we actually create everything based on what we want to experience. Everything. Everything around us is based on what we want to experience, the lessons we want to learn. And that's how from when, when we work in energy work and in the metaphysical stuff and spiritual stuff, that's where we come from. Those, that's the premise of how it works. We base it from the perception of everything in the physical comes from something in the non-physical. So whether it is very physical, like um, a pimple, you know, or a face breakout, or a broken arm, or a stubbed toe, or it's something that's going on in your life, like you can't seem to get past a certain obstacle, you can't seem to get it all together, you can't seem to find a job, or whatever. All of that is caused by the lessons that we've set out to achieve, accomplish, or, or get. And individually and collectively and we have gone through the practice first of all of disempowering ourselves or pretending that we are actually not in power beyond what's in the physical okay so we've done that to such an extreme that the ego which has ruled pretty much the consciousness at this level of existence in the 3d world we have gotten to the point of um the ego saying, well, yeah, it's just a broken arm. It's just an accident. We couldn't do anything about it. It was a car accident. It wasn't our fault. Um, it's not my fault that it happened in my reality. Or, you know, a tree crashed on my house. Or, you know, the storm came through. And it's not my fault. It's, it's out of my control. Because look, it's a storm. It's nature. How could I control that? That's all That's all part of the lesson. So the ego saying, all oh, well, it's, it's the ego is looking at the world from a separate separation point of view and that's what its job has been um, and so as we're evolving as we're going through the shift now we're getting to the point of remembering our oneness and our interconnectedness and that everything is interconnected and when we do that then we are stepping into our truth and stepping into our power as the divine and remembering that yeah guess what yeah we create it all of it in one way shape or form and see here's the thing somebody standing right next to us can have a completely different ex experience of reality um, than us because it's what they create for themselves for their lessons as we create what we have for our lessons so that goes back to the discussion when's a stub toe just a stub toe well either you have to either either it's either it's you it's you, important to look at it from you believe everything is interconnected and has a purpose or you believe that nothing is and the reason I say that, so it's everything and nothing. And in a way, it is actually both because, like I said, well, we create this reality for the lessons, and it's all an illusion. So it is everything and nothing. <laughs> That's the mind-blowing thought for the day. But if you just look at it from the lesson point of view, um, there isn't any way we can say, yeah, some of this means something, some of it means nothing. It's the same thing of how much can you accept many people will say oh i believe in angels or archangels but then they don't believe in things like animal totems or they don't believe in um aliens or what we call aliens but what, what i call star beings um, beings on other planets and other galaxies and stuff like that which it's pretty much six of one half a dozen the other but it's basically what we've been taught we're allowed to believe again that's disempowerment 
if we truly are creating our entire reality, well, guess what? Fairies and dragons and angels and totems and whatever. However, we need to see something to get the lesson, to make the connection, to make the communication. That is how we're going to see it. That's how we're going to experience it. And the more we open our arms and allow it to come in the highest and best form for us to do the grace and ease thing, the better it actually works for us. I have a great time because I see all kinds of beings. They all come to me with some amazing stuff and great energies and all different kinds from all different what you would call mythologies or all different belief systems, all different kinds of perceptions of the world because I allow it because I believe that it's all true. It's all what we have created. So if we believe it, if we've created it, then it's there whether you know we want to see it from this perspective or not because it's all interconnected and it all helps. You know, that's how you then boil it down to how you get messages. Well, movies give you messages and, and songs and billboards and um, car license plates and things that, conversations with other people, even if it's not intended. You always get these messages back on what you're, you're trying to learn or what you need to look at and all that kind of stuff to progress. So that goes back to this. In the energy work, we're always looking at what the non-physical cause of the physical is the non-physical cause of why that accident happened many many times because of the ego ruling this level of consciousness it has cut we have cut off or partitioned our consciousness we have many other levels of consciousness beyond this one that we are simultaneously running in but we have voluntarily um, partitioned off our levels of consciousness up until now so that we could fully experience these different levels uh, so, we have believed that, you know, this is it. You know, many times, this is it. This is what we see. Okay. So, the higher self says, well, mm -hmm. that's fine and dandy, except it goes back to that metaphor that I've used so many times about the, the ego is like the pawn on the playing board, on a, on a game board, that can see what the pawns do, are doing right in front of it and behind it and on each side of it. And it makes its decisions based on that, but doesn't take anything else into consideration like the whole playing board and what actually could work faster and all that kind of stuff, where that's what the higher self does, because it, it's sitting there at the table looking at the whole board going, okay, yeah, that's not really the good, uh, the best, the best turn for us. If you really want grace and ease, we need to go this way. But if we've partitioned ourselves off so much that we're not listening, it has to be a pretty loud message for it to come through. So many times we have gotten messages over and over and over again. And it's when it gets to the point of severity, what I call the etheric two by four, uh, the proverbial etheric two by four upside the head is when we get into um, an accident, we get injured, we get a chronic illness or a, a very serious illness or, or something really intense happens in our lives. Like we lose our jobs or a relationship breaks up or a, a tree falls on our house. Those are our proverbial etheric two by fours because we have most likely, actually pretty much all the time when that happens, have gotten the message at least 10, 15, 20, maybe 50 times and ignored it. The ego says, oh, yeah, not comfortable, just not looking at it. Uh, yeah, not comfortable, just not looking at it. How many times have, have you repressed something? How many times have we repressed something because it was uncomfortable for us to look at? We didn't want to look in the mirror, so we sort of put it aside and put it aside, and it sort of kept on coming up, and it sort of just bugged us every once in a while, bugged us, but we thought it would go away, and then finally, bang, it hits us in the head. <laughs> sometimes literally. Sometimes we stub our toes. Sometimes we break an arm. Sometimes we are laid up in the hospital. Sometimes we die. Sometimes, you know, so... The key is when we accept that full responsibility for our reality, then guess what? We will start looking at the smaller lessons and accepting them instead of having to wait to get that proverbial two by four upside the head. I don't know about you, but that's my preference. I, I would prefer to get the little tiny nudges or the little pokes saying, hey, you need to look at this or this is important to see or hey let's let's go in this direction and check this out because this is actually has a lot of potential for us if we can do that then we can avoid those serious situations altogether now the storm things um, mass killings mass stuff like you know things that happen on the mass scale that's actually a collective thing so usually then a lot of people in the same place are going through the same kind of lesson and they've gotten it to an exacerbated point that needs to um, that we need to all look at and if it's in our reality at all then there's a reason for us to look at it always 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 so that person who annoys 
you'd beyond belief is there's something that is being pulled out, externalized to you so that you need to, you know, that's showing you something you need to look in the mirror about. And sometimes it's something that's going on within you that is very reflective. Sometimes it's an, it's a contrasting thing, but it's, it just takes some practice. And because we've shut that off for so long, many find it confusing and overwhelming at first and all that kind of stuff. Well, the key is just one step at a time and clearing that, that connection to your higher self. But it goes back down to that original conversation of, well, and so the accepting, the exception or accepting is the accepting part of this is it's all meaning something. And it all means nothing because it's all an illusion. But in this context, it means it all means something because the the ego trying to put a line on saying well sometimes it's a stub toe sometimes it's not sometimes it's just you know nothing that's the ego saying yeah that's just uncomfortable for me to look at and that's okay that's if that's your choice that's your choice but the more you stop the more you avoid looking at it if it can go from a stub toe to a broken foot or broken leg or worse so the choice is yours can, do I want to look at it when it's just a little stub toe or do I want to look at it when I've like had it have my leg amputated because I completely ignored it so much completely ignored that message from my higher self um, before I would look at this to heal and resolve and clear and release and to complete that lesson um, so it's sort of like nipping stuff in the bud is really the key and when we do accept that everything in our reality is something of our creation is something of our intention then that is what that then we can start moving along at a much faster rate in terms of our evolution and our healing and um, moving on to the next fun game in this whole um, existence so on that I'm gonna let you go this week I want you your homework is just to pay attention pay attention um, and we'll talk to you next week this is Angela with this week's Living the Shift <laughs>